Well, hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Welcome to electrical-online.com, home of your internet electrician, and that's me, Terry Peterman, and of course, you're watching me right here on YouTube. So in this project video, I'm tackling a backyard landscape lighting project, as well as getting some power outlets out in the backyard, just so we can have uh, somewhere to charge your phone while you're out by the fire and possibly later down the road if somebody wants to go to low voltage landscape lighting there they could plug in the transformer for landscape lighting however in this one I'm going to go with 120 volt landscape lighting now the reason I chose to go with 120 volt lighting instead of the traditional 12 volt or 24 volt low voltage system number one the thing about landscape lighting in the low voltage form is that anybody can do it you are working with low voltage, so you don't have to bury your wires too far underground. And they're fairly easy to work with. And solar, of course, that's another whole ball game where you've got to worry about batteries wearing out, usually annually, bulbs becoming loose and, and corroded, so you have to fix up the connections all the time on both low voltage and solar lighting. So I wanted just to go back to good old 120 volt lighting. So I'm gonna bury this in half inch PVC conduit and I'm going to run it throughout the yard. I'm going to make a loop through the yard. Um, while I'm there, I'm picking up power to my greenhouse that we just recently installed. So I'm going to show you all that, how I've functioned or how I've made that all work. And I'm going to draw you a little map and show you exactly kind of what we're going to do with the backyard. But without further ado, let's get at what I'm doing here. So here's a little sketch I drew on the whiteboard of what we're going to be doing. Just roughly, we got a, not to scale of course, or not expertly drawn, patio here. We've got our greenhouse here. This is a little weatherproof panel outside that we're going to feed this from. Coming down into the ground with half inch PVC. Up here is going to be the switch for the landscape lighting. Out of the back of that box into the greenhouse to feed it. That's going to be a separate video as to how I do the wiring in that greenhouse, very basic, but something good to see. Back down underground, we gotta go around a planter here that I forgot to draw in. So we got a 90, a 90, and a 90 up to our first pedestal. That's where, right, it's right by the fireplace area, fire pit area. So that's gonna be where you can uh, have a 120 volt GFI outlet here and some landscape lighting to light up the area. And then we're gonna move on catch another pedestal here with just landscape lighting on it another pedestal here and these are going to have spotlights I'm using LED spots so they're just going to shine in both directions here I'll just draw that in they're going to shine that way and that way and all these fairly low to the ground I'm only going to use 20 inch posts here so another one here with a uh, floodlight that way and that way and then over to the final pedestal which is just ja uh, lighting up a little Japanese maple in a little flower garden here so that one will shine that way and that way so that gives you a rough idea of what we're doing I'm going to show you how I'm building these little posts and pedestals with that that will house the uh, power outlet the receptacle and the octagon or the round PVC box to put on a fixture Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I'll show you those later, but I've got some uh, spikes, 4x4 four four anchor posts that you pound into the ground. They have a long, about a 24 inch spike on them and a clamp at the bottom that'll hold this 4x4. Four four. So that's the basis for my pedestals. A 4x4 four four post that's about 20 inches high. I'm going to put a nice little cedar cap on it like that. And at the top, I'm going to have my Oct or round octagon box, not octagon, it's round PVC box, which will be the fixture, the outlet box for just a simple two spot uh, floodlight housing or a spotlight housing with uh, just regular lamp holders here outdoors, suited for outdoor use, of course. And I've got dimmable LED floodlights. I, for some reason, had a bunch of these left over, so I thought, why not use them up? So these are going to be mounted on the round PVC box. You can adjust them to shine out. What I didn't show you on that drawing is those eight boxes along the back are actually flower gardens, tiered all the way up to follow our sloped uh, backyard here, follow the cedar fence line. So 
two of those spa separated out will be enough to light up a whole, that whole flower garden back there. There's just a tree and a couple shrubs on either side in each one of those. So with these floodlights, lighting that up nice and low should look good. And then out of this round PVC box, of course, I'm coming down at the first one, I'm coming into a receptacle box, which where I'll have a GFCI receptacle, as I said, by the fire pit area. And the other three posts are just gonna have this uh, four by four junction box below the round box. And that way I can come up with my half inch PVC. I can come up out of the ground with the 90 in and back out to the next pedestal location. And I'm even leaving one of these at the last one of the run. I'm gonna come into one side so that if there's anything else I wanna add later on, I can come out of it with another chunk of half inch PVC. It's gonna be one circuit, does all this. It's low, low wattage LED light bulbs, so they're gonna be eight or nine watts each. So eight of those, uh, eight times nine is 72 watts for the entire system. So that's how we're gonna do it. I will take you outside now and show you exactly what we're doing and we'll get at the project. So let's go outside. All right, so as described in the opening, there's my source back there is that outdoor panel. Going down underground and coming across between the patio and the greenhouse is my half inch conduit. It comes up on one side here of this FS box with two inlets at the bottom and then back down, it's gonna go around the yard to my yard lights and my power point there over by the fireplace. So I'll show you what I did inside the greenhouse, but this here is gonna be the dimmer switch for all the yard lighting, which is gonna be 120 volt as I described. Then I came out of the back of this box and into the greenhouse where I'm gonna put a switch, probably switch outlet combo, cause all we'll ever need maybe in there is a, a space heater if we, keep things in early or late into the season and you want to keep them in the greenhouse and warm things up at night and then a switch for a light should we need a light in there so that I'll be doing later on in the project that'll be a whole other project when I wire this greenhouse but for now the pipes just going inside to a box that I'll show you in there and then like I say back down 90 degree underneath this little sidewalk I have built here and now I'm going to have to dig my trenches to all my locations for lights, which will be four locations, and I'll show you those throughout the yard here. All right, now from inside the greenhouse here, you see that outlet box. It's a PVC box where you just drill your outlets that you need into it. So I'm coming into the back of that one with my power. I'll put a switch receptacle combo here, and then I'll come out of the top of that, and we'll go up to a, a LED strip light in here for some lighting. Now, as you can see how I mounted this, this is just a, a, a rather uh, lightweight greenhouse, but it's got these tracks on here and you slip nuts into these tracks. There has to be an access hole where you drill in and you can get a nut head back inside here, or I should say a bolt head. And then I fasten some Unistrut here. So this is 2H Unistrut. And so this is good and solid, screwed by box, good and solid here. And then out of the top, like I say, and I've brought another piece of Unistrut across here that I'll be able to strap. Probably I'll either get some uh, liquid tight, or I should say EMT with liquid tight fittings I'll use so I can bend that bend here, or I may even just use some liquid tight flex out of the top of this and bring it up, strap it on that Unistrut, and then I'll mount a fluorescent LED strip across those struts in the peak. So there again is my source panel, little four circuit panel there, outdoor rated. And I've got my conduit going down for another application, but then the half inch conduit that you see running along here, it'll be all filled in. I've got to put a lot of fill in here between the house and the, or I should say the patio and the greenhouse. So that'll be all covered up to the proper depth. Then I put a two by four in here to mount this switch on, dimmer switch I'll use for the outdoor lighting. And I got my power coming in then from the panel and then going back down underground, which again, this will all be filled in. 
underneath that little sidewalk and out the other side. So there's the conduit coming out from under the sidewalk. I taped up that end so nothing would get into it. I put this in before I built that little sidewalk. And as you can see, I don't have my grade up to level here yet. That's coming. So I really don't have to dig very deep because I'll be bringing in a lot of fill here, at least another foot to fill along this side. So my conduit will carry on here. I'll make a 90 degree bend through here between these two planters. Another 90 degree bend. We're gonna come up that post. It's gonna be a four by four post with my light fixture on it. And this one is also gonna have a power point here, just a receptacle so we can charge the phone if we're sitting out here by the fire. So that'll be one light, give you some light if you need it to fill wood in there and build your, build your fire starter, your log cabin or your teepee, whatever you wanna do, give you some light on that and some light around ambiance, landscape lighting around the patio area, the fireplace area. So then I'll go up that post, back down. I'm gonna catch this post, which is gonna be just two spotlights, floodlights to light up the garden area both ways here. And then I'll be digging over to another location there, evenly spaced along the back garden here, back planters. And then the last step will be up into that post back down and over to this one to light up the Japanese maple here and this little flower garden. So showing you where everything is, now I got to get to work and start digging. And as I said, I don't have to go too deep because I'll be adding a bunch of fill on here. But I want to give myself lots of room to work. Approaching where I'm going to make my 90 degree bend. So we'll come straight out of here, 90 degree bend, and another 90 degree bend, and another 90. So that run is going to have four 90s, which is the maximum allowed. All right, so I got the first run of conduit done. See, I added on with the coupling there from where it was coming out from under the sidewalk, turning the corner, and heading over this way to the first post. So I just need to run a 90 up there and then a 90 back down into the ground. And before I do that and cut my pipe to length, I'm gonna bury this and tamp it in so that my pipe doesn't move. Cause if I cut that to the right length and the 90's not coming up exactly where I want it, then I'm in trouble and I'm gonna have to move the pipe somehow. So to avoid that, I'm gonna make sure I put the dirt back in in the trench tamp it all in and then I'll know exactly where that conduit is when I cut that 90 going up and I'll show you that a couple tools I've used so far is tape measure pencil uh, sawzall and this isn't essential but it sure helps nice cold beer okay so I've finished stubbing up to my first post first pedestal here by the fireplace now I strapped on temporarily there, I strapped that conduit on to the post anchor here so that to hold it in place. And then I taped the other one in because it's just a little bit too low to get a screw in. So I just taped them together to keep them the right distance apart because both of them are gonna be coming in to this box. I'm gonna have to drill my holes, half inch knockout holes to uh, bring in the conduits into this junction box when it's mounted on the pole, on the post, I should say, not the pole. And so you want them evenly spaced in the, in the right position before you, of course, backfill your conduit here. So find any method possible to tape them in the right spot or hold them in the right spot before you backfill. So as you see now, I'm coming from the house or from the panel, the source here. I've got it backfilled to there and now I'm off to the second location over by the flower beds where the lighting will be. And that's coming up the back side of that post and I screwed that to the, to the uh, frame of the post anchor as well, just temporarily, like I said, because I won't be able to put that two by four or four by four in there with that screw in there. So I have to have that uh, just temporarily held in place just to hold things together while you backfill. And while I'm talking about it, these posts, you want to make sure before you start a project like this that you have no services in the backyard and I don't I know that for a fact my 
water's in the front, sewer's in the front, and my all my electrical and, and uh, communication cables are overhead, so I had nothing to worry about back here. Gas line also out front, but if you do have any any uh, utilities underground in your backyard or anywhere for that matter you got to call if you have a system in place for a first call you need to make that call so that they can locate any utilities now I had mine all located when we started this project so I know that there's nothing back here I felt safe to go ahead but you can imagine pounding in I showed you that this post anchor before pound that in and it goes in like two feet, you could easily pierce a gas line, a gas utility line or an electrical cable or anything. So always do first call before you dig, do any digging projects in your yard. Okay, so you can see here where I've just put one screw into a strap just to hold that conduit in place and off it's gonna, coming from the first pedestal by the fireplace. And then we're gonna head in this direction to the next location up the hill here. And to make this little conduit run work here, that's gonna go into this junction box and then out, I'm uh, gonna have to bring this one in below that one. So it fits nice and tight against the post and it'll head that way towards the next location. So I'm gonna tape this into place or put a strap on and screw it and finish digging my trench over to the next location. So back to the digging. Okay, so digging off to the third location here, and I might as well just give you a couple tips on digging a trench. I had to learn this the hard way. My first job in the oil field for doing electrical work, I spent a whole summer on the end of one of these, a goon spoon. So when you're digging, dig away from your trench. Stay behind it and always pry into your ditch that you've already dug so it's much easier to get the soil out so just take little bites go one way on that ditch i'm almost to where i want to be here and then you just turn around dig back the other way doing the same thing digging into the hole you've already dug prying into that hole and then at the end you just come along and scoop out the loose soil and you've got your ditch ditch digging 101 Okay, so I've done my last stretch of trench here from the third location to the fourth here. So I'm going to leave no backfill around my post so I can adjust my conduits when I go to finish up putting them up the 4x4 four four post. So I'm just going to show you there's a little tip to uh, backfilling a trench as well. You always want to kind of rake it with the edge of your shovel, the side of your shovel, starting by just raking off the top so that what you took out last goes in first. And you just kind of go along like that, knocking in the debris material you took out last first. And then when you get to the bottom, you're taking out what came out first back on top again. So you see using the edge of your shovel or the side of your shovel like that, you can clean it up pretty nice. And then you leave a little mound over top of your trench that you can stomp down after and compact. Now, kind of a funny little story here that Sandy might get a kick out of when she goes to edit this. When I pounded in this last anchor for the post, that last spike, that was the first one I actually pounded in and I kept hitting rocks. Everywhere I moved it, I wanted it right in front of this flower bed, right in center. I kept moving it back and forth and about six inches down, I'd be hitting something solid. Turned out it was this guy, this giant rock here. So I ended up having to dig down here and dig out that big rock. And so that was, that enabled me to pound this post down in or the spike into the ground. And then uh, I wanted to fill it back in, but of course I'm missing that much material because that was rock. We'll use that somewhere in the yard for landscaping. So I went and gathered up a bunch of broken concrete and ugly rocks to fill in the hole. And I filled it all in and I took the sledgehammer and pounded those rocks all back in, made it nice and level. And then Sandy's watching me and says, don't you uh, need to leave that open to dig your trenches and get the conduits in? So I, I had no recourse but just to start digging back the rocks out. So she, she had to point out a few things to be there to make sure I kept on track. Thanks, Sandy. 
Okay, I've got all my pedestals mounted now. I'm going to show you a little detail when I get up close as to how I uh, put those in place. But I've got all my wires pulled now. It's been a crazy weather day here. Shemaine is British Columbia. We've gone from warm sunshine to rain, drizzle, hail, and then even sunshine while it's hailing. So anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there, but it's made for a challenge in getting this done between showers. So I've got the first run is to that, that uh, pedestal right there by the fire pit. That's going to be the receptacle and the landscape lighting. And then we're looking over there at the other one by the flower beds. Looking at the back side of it. Got the wires pulled in all the way over to that pedestal. That's going to shine on the flower beds as well. And we got this last run of wire to pull in. So I'm going to show you how we do that using a fish tape and hooking our wires on and pulling them in. So first let's start with Sorry for the shaky camera angle there. First we'll start with pushing that fish tape from that junction box at that third pedestal and we will bring the fish tape up here at this pedestal and then hook the, the wires on and pull them back. All right, so I just gotta uncoil some of my fish tape here it's kind of wet out here, so I don't want to get my fish tape wet. And if I do, I want to dry it off because nothing worse than a rusty fish tape. It makes more friction, harder to push in, and shortens the life of your fish tape. So, should be an easy one. Only two 90s to go through. The one with four 90s didn't go too bad at all. There I could feel I'm at the second 90 and I'm in the junction box. All right, fish tape is here. Bring it out. I'll hook my cables onto it or my wires, I should say. All right, so I'm going to show you the proper way to hook these wires to this fish tape. Just talking about the wires for a minute here. I could not find single conductors at the home improvement store and I don't have an account yet here with a wholesaler, but you would have the same issues if you were trying to do this job as well. So I just recommend picking up some Lumex or Romex and stripping that out, outer jacket and using that cable. So that's what I've done. I just bought a roll of 14-2 Lumex, we call it here in Canada, or Romex in the US. And I stripped it, stripped the outside jacket to pull it into the conduit as per code. So I also was able then to use a black wire for an extra conductor and a white wire in some cases as I did here for the extra conductor and I just identified it as red and I'm going to do that even with the extra black wire. The reason for that is I'll explain when we're hooking up the, the switch for everything here but I've got one receptacle here and I want to be able to add full power at any of these pedestals if I ever need it so I'm going to have three conductors. One neutral, two hots and of course a ground. The one hot, which will be the one identified red, whether it's a black or a white wire that I've used here, just to not uh, waste anything, because the price of copper these days in wire is sky high, about three times what it was when I was back contracting. Anyhow, the uh, red wire will be the wire that's hooked up to the dimmer switch for all the landscape lighting. And then the black wire is gonna be the one that's gonna run anything that's gonna need power all the time, like my receptacle by the power, by the uh, fireplace. So just a little explanation on that. Let's hook these wires now onto my fish tape. Now with a little short run like this, you could almost just tape the wires to the fish tape and it would pull in fine. But the worst thing that can happen is when you uh, get almost your cables all the way in and then they pull off the fish tape and you got to start all over. So I'm just going to show you the best way to hook wires individual conductors to a fish tape and that way you know you won't lose any and they'll all come in together so basically a strip about two three or four inches off of each conductor 
Like I said, overkill for this short run. I could almost push him in from here. So strip a little chunk of insulation from all the conductors. And of course we have our bare ground wire. And if you were using individually individual conductors, you would buy likely a jacketed wire for your ground and it would be green. I don't know if you can hear the quail calling for his mate. <laughs> Got lots of wildlife in the yard here. Okay, so with all four conductors stripped, what you want to do is wrap two of them one way through the fish tape hoop and to the other direction. And if you were doing a big long pull like we used to do in the oil field through heavy duty rigid steel conduit, we would then twist them together so they can't come apart. But if you just pinch them nice and tight on your fish tape like this, and then tape, critical. Use your electrician's tape, tape these together nice and tight. Make sure you get over top of any ends that are sticking out. The thing is you don't want anything that's gonna catch on a conduit coupling inside that pipe and cause you to have to pull it out and start over. You also wanna tape up your hook on your fish tape to make sure it doesn't catch on anything. But if you've bent a proper hook on your fish tape, which I'm gonna show you in a video one day, then you don't have to worry about that catching either. But Tape them all up. Give your tape a twist at the end here, just so you can grab that end when you're done. And there you go. You wanna run your hand over it, make sure there's nothing snagging or catching. And we can go ahead and pull these conductors in. Now it's good to have somebody on the other end pulling while you feed. But again, this is such a short run that I'm gonna be able to just poke those down the pipe if you had a big run and you had a lot of conductors close to your uh, fill factor or the, the uh, allowable amount in a half inch, you'd want to maybe lube these conductors up. There's stuff called wire lube, water soluble wire lube, and around the house, something called dish soap works just as well, or and especially maybe Dawn because that's of course environmentally friendly. You can clean ducks with that. So now we'll just pull these in and we'll go on to hooking everything up. Okay. And there we're in. Pull enough to get up to the light outlet. All right, so after I assembled the, the uh, octagon of the round PVC box, to the junction box in the case of the other three and to this receptacle box in this case. What I did then is I set the post down on the, on the spike mount and I measured the distance of conduit I'm gonna need from the conduit that's coming out of the ground here into the coupling and then into the connectors on the bottom of the box. So I took that measurement, pulled the post back off, went and cut my, my uh, pieces of conduit that fit in here. They were between three and four inches, most of them. Then I cut them, glued them into the connectors that are underneath the box here that you can't see. And then I glued the couplings down onto the conduits coming out of the ground. And then the final step was, was put the cement on the conduits, slide the pole down in and the conduits down into the couplings and push it down and done. So that finished off those nicely. All right, so I'm ready to hook up this pedestal. This will be the last in the run, so I'll just show you how I'm doing this on the last one here. The other ones are gonna be a little hard to get the camera in behind because they, of course, are pointing towards the fence and the flower beds, so this is the best one to show you. So here's my conduit coming in to this four x four junction box. Kept it on the right side. Now I could go out on this side of the box if I, ever need to uh, carry on with some other landscape lighting or
power point somewhere throughout the backyard. So, the only difference with this one and the other junction boxes that have ins and outs is that I will have to splice my neutrals and my blacks together in this box, tuck them away for future use because again that black wire will be full 120 volt and then the red wire that I've ran is from the dimmer switch. So the red wire is going to be used throughout for the landscape lighting. So I just have to hook my fixture up to the ground, the white and the red up here in the light outlet box. And here these will just get tucked into the box and put the cover on. So let's do that. And you want to just, I capped off the black here with the moret. Like I said, it's not going to be used. If we ever do use it, we'll just splice that white wire and splice in a, uh, three whites then because we'll have one carrying on and we'll tie on to that black if we're needing the uh, full power for a receptacle and we will also be able to tie into the red if we want to continue some landscape lighting somewhere. So tuck these in nicely out of the way. And I'll put the cover on that when we're done. I've got lots of extra wire here. Probably shouldn't have wasted any copper with the price of cable and wire these days. But really a minor detail in the big picture here. Now ground wire is going to have to get tied on to these metal lamp holders as you can see. They have a ground screw in here so I'm going to have to wrap that ground wire around one, 180 degrees and then over to the other one and I'll leave a pigtail just in case uh, you ever need to tie a ground on for a different kind of a fixture. I won't snip any of that off. So we'll get it ready to connect. Okay so first things first I will connect that ground wire. Make sure your gasket's in place before you do your wiring or you're going to have to undo it to get the gasket in place. And like I said, I'll hook around one screw, 180 degrees. Should be coming in at this angle. Just because there's a ridge there to retain the cable, the wire I should say. So I want it going towards the inside of that housing. I don't know if you can see that. You'll see it better on the second one I do. Snug that down. And then you'll see it better on this one. Wrap it around that screw. Gotta loosen that a little bit. Get the copper wire in behind it. And bend it so it's nice and tight around the screw. Grounding or earthing screw, you can see that. Okay, so both of my lamp holders are grounded. We'll leave that tail, just tuck it into the box, and now I'll connect my neutrals. So we got two pigtails coming out of each lamp holder, one of each out of each I should say for a total of two. Twist those stranded wires together and connect that to the neutral source. Tighten that wire nut down, pull hard on each stranded conductor and the solid, make sure they're in that splice, good and solid. And now connect to the red.
both blocks. Make sure their ends are even. Twist those together. Bring in your solid source hot wire. Tighten that down good and tight. And again, check, make sure they're both, they're both firmly inside the wire nut. Tuck your excess back. Make sure there's ground wire. Wouldn't be even a bad idea to put a marette on it here because if when you're pushing it back in the box, technically you could end up shoving that bare wire up into the wire nut for a dead short circuit, but unlikely, but hey, I always want to try to teach you the best possible practices here. All right, ready to put the screws in. Get it started first. Make sure your gasket is good all the way around. Okay, there's my fixture on. I can adjust these lights however I want, but you can see the gasket is Nice and sealed all the way around for a watertight seal. So now we just gotta put on the four by four cover with gasket. Start all your screws before tightening down. Check your gasket. It's compressed all around. There you go. All I gotta do is put on my lamps and make some adjustments the way I want these lights to shine. All right, so I've worked my way back, hooking up all the pedestals. Now to the first pedestal, that's downstream, of course, the supply and the switch for it. I'm gonna explain these connections inside this GFI outlet I'm putting by the fireplace. As you can see here, I'm gonna tell you the red wires are just spliced through, so coming in from the dimmer switch, going out to the next pedestal, and then going up to the light fixture above this one. That's why you see three red wires there spliced together. They're gonna to be tucked into the back of the box. Dealing with the ground wires, which I usually like to talk about first, but let's go back. I've got the ground wire coming in. It's tied off to that metal bracket inside that PVC box that you see on the upper left. There's a ground terminal for that. Then they're pigtailed, so ground wire in ground wire going out to the rest of the circuit and a ground wire going up to the light fixture with the pigtail now to go to the switch so or to the GFI receptacle so we've got four 14 gauge wires inside that gray uh, ideal marette or ideal wire nut that you see on the right sticking out with the ground wires three in so ground in ground out ground up to the fixture and a pigtail for the GFI then dealing with our neutrals, same thing as the grounds. We have neutral in, neutral out, neutral up to the light box, and a pigtail to go to the GFI receptacle. And then the hot wires that are not through the switch, or the, the dimmer switch, the constant hot for the receptacles, I've got power in, power out to the next pedestal, and a pigtail again. So we've got three wires here, in, out, and a pigtail to the GFI. Now, I don't have any other receptacles downstream of this, but in future I may, and one would think, well then why don't you use that GFI receptacle and protect the rest of the future outlets on the load side of it? Well, you can't do that here because the way it's wired, we have one circuit, a 15 amp circuit feeding this, and if I was to wire up that GFI receptacle with the load terminals are the line terminals in on the inside of the GFI receptacle and then the load from here on going out to the rest of this circuit well if you turned on a light switch 
or yes, you turn on the light switch and the lights are working, suddenly you would have current flow coming back through that GFI receptacle on the neutral because it's uh, the same neutral. So anytime you turned on the landscape lighting, all that current would flow through the ground fault device, which basically monitors the current on the hot and the neutral. So you'd see now three or four amps coming back through this GFI, but nothing going out because there's nothing plugged into this outlet and it would trip. You'd have nuisance tripping instantaneously. instantaneously. So what this means is that if I ever do add a, a receptacle anywhere else in the yard using that black and white, I'm going to have to install another GFI receptacle at that outlet and hook it up to the line side terminals. So just kind of uh, something to be aware of if you did try to hook this up like a regular in and out with the line and load of a GFI you would have tripping just because of that neutral current that you'd see coming back through it on the neutral wires from the lights. And just backing that out, you can see how I've got the red, the white, and the ground coming up for, to hook up this last light fixture. So others may ask as well, do you need GFI on the lighting as well on this circuit? The answer there is no. It really wouldn't be a bad idea because there is some potential to come in contact with, I guess, if you stick your finger in the socket. But with outdoor lighting, if it's going to be plugged in, then yes, you have to have a GFI outlet outside to plug that lighting in because you have access and could come into contact with the live wires by touching the prongs or else, or elsewise. But being these are actual light fixtures on a switch, then you do not need GFI protection for that because you just need to ensure that your equipment is all rated for wet location and that is we have gasketed fixtures and fittings and uh, there's no way for water to get in there and you really aren't getting at the you're not accessing the power there they're just hooked up to the fixtures the light bulbs are installed and the LED lamps so no you do not need the the GFI protection on the lighting portion of this However, like I said, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And if I was to do it that way, then I would just feed this whole circuit with a GFCI breaker. And then the entire circuit would be protected. But the risk is minimal and the code does not require the lighting to be GFI. As I mentioned, unless it's plug-in fixtures. Okay, so I've got my GFI outlet all installed with, along with the in-use heavy-duty receptacle cover. So there it is inside there. Now, before you get all excited and say and fill my comment section with hate, I, I've linked a video that I did before on the exact way to install these in-use covers. It's on an outdoor wall, but it's exactly the same box, in-use cover. So you can check that out. Like I said, the link is in the description. So go to that if you want to learn how to install these properly. But there you go. Now working our way back, we're going to the switch the dimmer switch and our power feed points all right so working backwards we're at the final destination which is actually the start of the circuit other than the panel which we'll get to and hook up that breaker but this is where we put in the slide dimmer switch so explaining what we have going on here we have our power conduit coming in from the panel going out to all the pedestals and going out of the back of the box into the greenhouse and as I mentioned that's another video we'll do on wiring up that greenhouse it'll be a short one this is a fairly extensive little project we're doing here now so the splices explained once again ground wires all ground in ground out ground over to the greenhouse and tied in the ground wire that goes to the dimmer switch the neutrals neutral in neutral out neutral into the greenhouse the hot wire in from the panel out to the rest of the circuit for receptacles and out to the greenhouse so in out and out so three wires in that splice and then i tied in the wire for the dimmer switch the feed wire and now on the other side of the dimmer switch the red wire this could be a three-way dimmer so it's an optional three-way this this one stays on because we're only using it as a single pole application so the red wire from the dimmer switch goes to the red wire to feed all the landscape lighting 
So again, if you're wondering if you'd like more detail on making splices, multiple wires in a splice and such, and you feel I missed that, and you'd like more, more information on that, we're linking in the description a video that is a five-part series on wiring a switch from start to finish. So I go through the whole rough-in of a, a box in a residential application, but I show you all the ground connections, all the neutrals, all the hots, how you pigtail, how you make those splices by pre-twisting some, others no. Total detail there, so click on that link if you want to see how to proper wiring methods for, for all those multiple splices like that. So just to recap, grounds, neutrals, in and out, and out again to the greenhouse. Hots, in, out, and out to the greenhouse, and to the dimmer switch, ground to the dimmer switch as well. And then out of the dimmer switch, to the red wire that's going to do all the landscape lighting. So we'll put this all together. This one is just outside of the awning cover for the patio, so it will be exposed to moisture. So we're going to put in, put on a outlet, uh, weatherproof outlet cover for a GFI. It's a Decora decor decorator, so it can be a Decora switch cover plate or a GFI or a regular Decora receptacle cover plate. That'll go on top of this, so you'll just have to lift the lid on it to adjust and turn on our landscape lighting. Okay, so I've hooked up the wire into the panel. I couldn't really get the camera in there. It's in a bit of an odd position because I have to be standing between the patio and the greenhouse, so there was no room to get the camera in and show you that. But in there, the wire just comes in. you got your ground connected to the ground lugs, neutral to the neutral bar, and the hot wire to the breaker you see there on the left. So... Let's turn that on and check things out. Well, thanks for watching that project video, landscape lighting in my backyard, along with that receptacle that we added. It's not maybe for everybody, those two lamp holders and dual flood lamps at each pedestal as I did, but I like it. And as I said in the opening, I had hardwired low voltage landscape lighting in my yard in Arizona and seemed like I was constantly picking up those wires with our rake because we just had desert landscaping there with, with washed rock and kept hooking those cables. So that can be a curse as well. And one day I had the bright idea to bury all those cables a few inches under the ground. And with all my digging in the backyard, I ended up putting about four holes in my irrigation system. So to try to solve one problem, I created many more. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, your internet electrician. Do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Thanks again, till next time.